at force number four. Uh, net force means unbalanced force, right? That's what we're talking about here. Looks like we got some stuff with angles going on here. If you look at these, person's arm, that force is being applied at an angle. Looks like that's the theme here. This box is being pushed at an angle. And then this last one is uh, what's called an Atwood's machine. And um, you may, uh, according to when you're doing this, when you're using this video, this might be part of a separate assignment. So uh, if you're supposed to just do one through three, then do that first, and you can come back and check out that last one when you are ready. All right, so um, we got a roller coaster. Assume friction is small enough that it can be ignored. So uh, this is something that is on a ramp. So when I make a force diagram, the rules for doing this have not changed, right? There's my uh, ramp, and gravity doesn't care. Force of gravity, car and rider, so the whole thing. So force of gravity on, I'm just going to say car from the entire Earth is 3,000 newtons. Okay, now everything else is going to be on these axes, um, including the x and y parts of gravity. And that 65 degree angle will be right there. So this will be the cosine, uh, sorry, that'll be the sine and the cosine parts of that. Uh, want to do that right now while we're at it? Why not? Uh-oh, got to get into degree mode. All right. So uh, this is going to be 3,000 times the, this is opposite, times the sine of 65. Call that 2720. And then this right here is 3,000 times the cosine of 65. Call that 1270. All right. Now, uh, what else we got? For no friction, so if this is accelerating down a hill, right? So forces are not balanced in this direction. Uh, but they are balanced in, in this direction because there's no motion this way. The car is not floating up off the track or sinking down into it. So forces are balanced in this direction. So that normal force on the car from the track has got to be the same as this. All right, I think we're good. All right, uh, determine the value of the component of the gravitational force that's parallel to the hill. What does that mean? Well, this is, these are the two components of gravity, and this is the one that's in the direction of the hill, so parallel to, same direction as. So that is uh, the force of gravity times the sine of 65, and that was uh, 27, 20. What's the acceleration of the roller coaster down the hill? Uh, well, this is, the, this is the unbalanced force. There's nothing else fighting against it in that direction. These are balanced. So unbalanced force is equal to this force of gravity, uh, the sine component of it. And that's equal to mass times acceleration. And that's equal to 2720. So the acceleration is 2720 divided by 300, is that uh, 9.1 meters per second squared. So just uh, an aside here, like thinking about that, if these people in roller coaster car or any other object was just uh, free falling, then the acceleration would be 10 meters per second squared. So it's really not much less than that at a 65 degree angle. The shallower the angle, the more you're going to kind of dilute or make gravity a little bit weaker. Um, so pretty close to 10. All right. 
Worker pushes a 7 kilogram shipping box along a roller track. Um, now this is not on a ramp. This is flat. So that means my axes that I will use are going to be regular old uh, horizontal vertical. So um, let's see. The uh, shipping or the box is oops, force of gravity um, box from the entire Earth is 70 newtons, 7 times 10. And what else we got? Um, the worker's push is directed uh, down and to the right, so it's like this way. So that means I'll have to remember we always put these on like the hands of a clock. So it's going to be coming from that dot. Uh, that's the force of push on the box from the worker. And that is uh, 25 newtons. And that is going to have to get broken up into its x and y. Once you have your axes drawn, that's just like plotting a point, x, y, right? Um, all right, so want to go ahead and find those. So let's see, this is the opposite side to the uh, 20 degree angle. So 25 times the sine of 20 will give me the opposite. It's about 8.6 newtons. And then this is adjacent to the 20 degree angle. So that's 25 times the cosine of 20. It's about 23.5. And that looks good with the 20 degree angle. It looks like the, those sides like make sense just looking at those numbers and the triangle. Um, OK. What else we got? Uh, assume friction is small enough to be ignored because of the rollers, so there's no force this way. And how about uh, normal force? Would it be the same as this? Well, the normal force is going to have to balance the uh, forces in the up-down direction. So if it was only gravity down, then uh, yes, the normal force would be the normal force would be just equal to the gravitational force. But I've got this up, but I've got that uh, two downs, right? I've got this and this component of the push down. So the normal force has to balance both of those, 70 and 8.6. Right, so that's what we got there. Um, that is not going to um, get you in this problem if you did that wrong. If you put 70 newtons here, it doesn't affect the answer to these questions, but it should be 78.6. And pretty soon we're going to uh, need to get that right to be able to get the right answer when we start doing more with the friction. Um, so determine the horizontal component of the worker's push. That's this. So that's the force of the push times that was adjacent to the 20 degree angle. So that's cosine tw uh, 20 degrees. And that was 23.5 newtons. Uh, write a net force means same as unbalanced force equation for the horizontal forces on the block. Well, uh, that's all there is. We don't have any friction here. So it's just that horizontal component of the push. And that unbalanced force is mass times acceleration. Oops. I think I got ahead of myself. That's what we're supposed to be doing for this part. Um, so 23.5 divided by Seven. It's about three point four. Oops. All right. Good. This is uh, similar, except we do have friction here. And in this case, instead of being pushed kind of in the downward direction, this is getting pulled up 
like that. So uh, let's make our force diagram. There's no ramp here, so regular old horizontal and vertical axes with the box at the middle. Start out by putting the gravitational force in there. Uh, force of gravity on the box from the entire Earth is 700 newtons. And then we've got this pulling force. It's going up like this way. It does a little wobbly there. Good enough. Going up into the second quadrant. That's a force of pull on the box from the, uh, you could say pull. You could also call that tension because it's a rope uh, from the rope. And that, because it's going into one of my quadrants, is the force that I'm going to have to break up into its components. Notice I'm always putting arrows on the ends of those components. That's important. And uh, 400 newtons is the pulling force. So I want to do the sine and cosine thing with that. I know the sine uh, opposite here, that's the sine of 30 is 1 half. So I know that this is going to be 200 newtons with your calculator. If you forgot that fun trigonometry fact, that's 400 times the sine, because we're opposite here, of 30. And then for adjacent, 400 times the cosine of 30 is about 346. That all looks good. Okay, how about the support force here? Kind of like the last one, except in this case, the support force on the box from the ground or floor, or whatever you want to call that. Um, this time I have two ups and one down. So 200 and this have to equal 700. 200 plus this thing have to equal 700. Math. Um, so now I have balance in the up-down direction. 700 is equal to the 700 in the up direction. Um, and we also have friction in this one. Force of friction on the box from the floor or ground or whatever you called it there. And I was careful to make that kind of small because this is 346 this way, so I want to make that look smaller. 75 newtons. Okay. Determine the acceleration of the box. To do that, I need an unbalanced force equation. Unbalanced force is equal to this. That's the cosine component of the pull. Minus the force of friction. And just leave that like that. Mass times acceleration. That's 70 times A. Uh, that we found right there, it's 346. Force of friction was given to us at 75. So, about 3.9. All right. Um, if you don't know yet um, what exactly an Atwood's machine is, and well, that's what it is, um, and you're not really sure how to do this, then um, you should uh, not watch beyond here. Come back after you do. All right, so I'll continue assuming uh, that you understand how to do an Atwood's machine problem, and you've given this a try. Um, so there's, uh, there's two ways to do this. Uh, when you release this thing here, um, the heavier one, this is just common sense, this heavier one is going to accelerate down, which means that down is the winning direction. Right, gravity versus the tension in the rope. And then here, this one is going to accelerate up. So force of tension in the rope, and then that's got to be winning doesn't mean the force of gravity gets smaller, it just means that that tension force must be bigger than whatever the gravitational force is. So um, it's important that you understand what those winning directions are because this is accelerating down and this is accelerating up and that um, 
has to go with the direction of the net force or whatever's winning. Okay, so uh, what do we know here? For block A, that's 50 newtons. And I don't know what the force of tension is, but it's the same. I mean, the tension force is the same tension force because it's the same rope. Um, and then here, I don't know what that is, but I do know that this force of gravity here is 20 newtons because that one's 2 kilograms. Okay, if we were going to write the um, net force or unbalanced force equation for each one of these, for block A and block B, for block A, I would write unbalanced force is equal to force of gravity minus force of tension. And for block B, I have unbalanced force is equal to uh, force of tension is winning, because up direction is winning, minus force of gravity. Let's put in everything we know here. So mass times acceleration uh, for block A, that's mass is 5 times A. The force of gravity on that is 50. <clears throat> and then the force of tension, I don't know. Here for block B, uh, the mass times acceleration would be 2A is equal to force of tension. The force of gravity on block B is 20 newtons. And now something magical happens, and it will happen every single time you do an Atwood's machine problem if you do this method here. Um, if you add these two equations together, add the left side, that's allowed, right? If you have, if you have two things that are equal to each other, and then two other things that are equal to each other. If you pile the left sides with the left sides and the right sides with the right sides, you're still going to have two things that are equal to each other, right? Um, so I can do that. So look at what we get when we add together the uh, left sides, 7a. And then look what happens on the right side. I've got a minus f of t and a plus f of t. Now those are going to cancel out. If you're thinking about, like, I don't know what the tension is, how am I supposed to do this? You don't need to know because when you add them together, the tension cancels out. And you get 50 minus 20. So the acceleration is 30 over 7, about 4.3. Um, I would call that, like, the long way of doing it. Um, What's the short way, you ask? Well, the short way is just to look at what are, what's the direction of motion. Like, look at your little rope. So for here, this is down, and uh, for here, this one's up. So what forces, and these are always going to be parts of gravity, um, and maybe possibly friction. Um, so what forces are in the direction of the acceleration? The acceleration is this way for this block and this way for this block. What forces are in the direction of that? Uh, well, the uh, force of gravity is here. Now, the tension forces, we know that internal here to the system, the tension forces are going to cancel out every single time. So instead of writing an equation that has them, I'm just going to focus on um, the non-tension forces. So I've got 50 newtons down this way. And then here, I've got 20 newtons this way. Well, this is helping the acceleration, and this is hindering it, right? That's slowing it down. Um, so 50 minus 20, helping, like basically winning, losing, right? 50 minus 20, this is my unbalanced force. And that's equal to mass times acceleration. The mass, what mass should I use? The mass of the whole system. So the mass of everything that's accelerating, that's the 5 and the 2. And then you get 30 over 7, you get the same thing. Oops, 4.3. Okay. So that's the, the short way. You're going to have a bunch of practice to do uh, with Atwood's machine problems, so have no fear.